I want to bring you exclusive new reporting by CNN Shimon Prokipez, who for nearly five months has been doggedly reporting on major developments in the investigation to the killings of 19 children and two teachers at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, in the botched police response. It took place May 24th and is one of the deadliest school shootings in U.S. history. Now, two weeks ago, Shimon brought us the story of a Texas state trooper, one of the first to arrive at the scene of the shooting, who was under investigation for her actions or lack of actions that day. She had quit her job as a trooper and was rehired as a school police officer in Uvalde. Now, many parents were stunned to learn that someone under investigation for her response on the day of the shooting would be hired to protect the very same school district. That officer has since been fired. Tonight, Shimon has new reporting about the actions of another state police officer under investigation, and Shimon jo joins us now. So what have you learned? Yeah, uh, Anderson, so uh, new information coming from newly obtained video and audio that has never before uh, been seen, which now points a picture of a Texas DPS captain who ordered the tactical team that was ready to breach that classroom, get inside that classroom to stand by. This despite the fact that there was a 911 call from a child inside that classroom saying they needed help. Thankfully, that TAC, TAC team went in anyway uh, and did not hear those transmissions. Uh, and now, of course, this is all raising questions about the role of this DPS captain and DPS in general that day. I'll stick with you. Amid the chaos at Robb Elementary in Uvalde, Texas, where nearly 400 law enforcement responded to a deadly school shooting last May, CNN has learned commands by a high-ranking state police officer may have contributed to the broader failed response that day. While a gunman sat in a room full of dead, dying, and traumatized children, New police radio transmissions obtained by CNN show Texas Department of Public Safety Captain Joel Betancourt given an order to stop police from entering the classroom. And one internal memo describes him before he arrives telling officers to stay away from the school and remain on the perimeter during the initial response to the shooting. Captain Betancourt was one of 91 DPS officers on scene in Uvalde. We are now learning he is one of the seven referred for further investigation over his actions. After lionizing the police response in the initial days, the Texas governor and state officials have pushed the blame for what has since been acknowledged as a failure on the local and school police. But CNN has now reviewed memos written just two days after the shooting that detail actions by the DPS that allegedly went against protocol for mass shootings. One lieutenant wrote, I heard someone shout out Captain Betancourt said all DPS personnel need to be on perimeter. Do not enter the building. And a sergeant reported he knew this was clearly against established training, and so he entered the school anyway. By the time Betancourt says he arrived outside Robb Elementary, students and teachers had already been trapped for more than an hour. Some at the scene, like this Border Patrol medic, are aware of the urgency inside the classroom. No, we hadn't heard that. No, we're, we're in the fours, right? This is this is building four. Anybody hurt? No, not here. No, sir. Here? Yeah. EMS in there already? No. No, sir. We have a shooter in there. Yeah. He's in here. He's in here. Yeah. I'm just going to stand right here. Be ready. The last contact, hey, hold on. last contact we had was one of our school PD officers. His wife was a teacher. She called him saying she's not. They just had a number of kid in room 12. Yeah, they had a kid in room 12. Most of them make them room 12. A Border Patrol tactical unit is preparing to end the standoff and storm the classroom. Yes, making breach. Come in. in a move that sources tell CNN has shocked people inside DPS, Betancourt picked up his radio and tried to stop the breach. Hey, this is uh, DPS The transmission can be clearly heard on several body worn cameras inside and outside the hallway of Robb Elementary. The tactical unit was already making entry. Kids, kids, kids! The shooter is killed and a devastating scene is revealed inside the classroom. In an interview with investigators that has been detailed to CNN, Betancourt said he did not know there were any children in the building until after the breach. That's despite 911 calls from children inside the room.
Betancourt says he was relying on information from Uvalde Sheriff Ruben Alasco that the gunman was a barricaded subject and no longer an active shooter and that a better SWAT team was on its way. He admits he never spoke to former school police chief Pete Arredondo, who has been labeled the on-scene commander, until after the shooter was killed. The memo referencing Betancourt's actions and another corroborating it are some of the clearest evidence that questions are being raised internally at the Department of Public Safety about the actions of its officers. His orders over the radio contradict the official narrative that the state police were never in command of the scene and never issued substantive orders. When questioned by CNN in September, DPS Director Colonel Steve McCraw confirmed the investigation into Betancourt and promised to resign if his agency was shown to have culpability for the botched response. Was there a body cam? Uh, there's apparently footage of him inside the hallway telling people not to breach that door. Have you heard that? Uh, I, you know, I've heard a lot of things, okay? But is there any but credibility I don't know that? if there is or not. But that's one of the reasons why we're doing the investigation, okay? No, I know. Yeah, okay. So, and, and, and we're, we're going to be... We're going to be thorough. I, and, and, and let be, me just I'll, explain I'll something to you. I don't want to do this. Hey, I'll be the, hey, I'll be your, the, hey, hey I'll, I'll be the first to resign, okay? I'll be gladly resign. I'll attend to my resignation to the governor, okay? If I think there's any culpability on the Department of Public Safety, period, okay? But we're going to hold our officers accountable. No one gets a pass. But every officer is going to be held accountable but, in that regard. But you are looking at this Captain Bell, of course, for information that you have that he may have told officers not to yes. go in the hallway. Yes, absolutely. How is Bencourt responding to So he hasn't, Anderson. You know, this is something we've been working on for quite some time. We had heard information from sources inside DPS who were really alarmed and concerned over the fact that Bencourt would give this order over the radio without having a full account of what happened. And just to be clear, he was giving an order to the tactical team, which was finally assembled to move in. This is after... Oh, well, 70, 70, 70 at, at the 77 minute mark. Right. So he was telling that team, that which team. had finally assembled, which are the ones who actually finally stopped this, this. That's right. He claims he didn't know that that was the team, that that was this Bortak team. Mm -hmm. He was concerned that they weren't experienced enough. And that is why he also has said that, well, one of the things that went into his thinking was he was told this was a barricaded subject. Uh, at no time did he hear that this was an active shooter. However, there are those 911 calls from a kid, a child inside that classroom that is clearly heard on police radio. It's being broadcast saying that there are kids inside the room why he didn't hear this, why this information was not relayed to other right. DPS officials is certainly raising a lot of concerns. The lack of just communication and disorganization is incredible in this. You have this captain giving orders. He says the sheriff was in charge. Department of Public Safety head says Arandondo was in charge. I mean, is it clear... Who was actually in charge? No, I think it, I think a picture is being painted that it's not exactly clear who was in charge. One of the things that has been so striking to me in, in gathering some of this information and talking to sources is that no one actually, it seems, from the DPS or any high-level official went in to talk to Pete Arredondo, the former school police chief, in the hallway to find out what he was dealing with, to find out other information. He was communicating with people, but no one, it seems, from the DPS, which is these highly trained officials, right. law enforcement officers who have all kinds of weaponry, who have the, the skills and have the equipment to go in and are supposed to go right in. It seems that some of that information was never relayed to them. We should just also point out the standard training for police departments around the country is who's ever there, who's ever on scene, assemble and go in and just neutralize the shooter. That is the basic 101 right. of active shooter right. training. Right, and, and, and the argument is, is being made that, well, uh, people thought this was, a, they keep saying they thought this was a barricaded subject. Okay, maybe at first, but how could they think that when there are 911 calls right. from these children inside the classroom and how that information never made its way mm. through the chain of command and why no one took the lead on this, it, it's still very much unclear. We saw you speaking with Colonel Stephen McGraw, the director of Texas Department of Public Safety. Uh, he told you he would resign and the department was, was you know, proved to be culp culpable or found to be culpable. Bedencourt is part of DPS. Has McGraw had anything to no, say? No, he, he's not, but we are expected to hear from him next week. On Thursday, there's a public safety commission a hearing, and on the agenda 
is Uvalde, what he will say and exactly mm. what details he will give. But that will be the next step and I, to hear from him on the latest, perhaps, uh, on this investigation. Mm. But again, of course, all of this is raising even more questions about the law enforcement response That's that incredible. day. incredible. Shamoon Prokupe, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.